Uh, we've been here since 93. We've been doing this now since 85. We got watermelon, we got pumpkins, we got bell peppers, cucumbers, sweet potatoes, eggplant, uh, hot peppers, uh, cantaloupe, about uh, 10 different kind of squash, uh, tomatoes here, uh, cabbage, uh, that pretty well covers most of it. About three years ago, why well, we'd taken the corn crib down here and when we did that it was right next to my one garden and we dug the ground all up so I thought well I'll just make that garden a little longer you know and the next year when I had my jalapeno peppers down there on the ground that I hadn't planted anything on why well, the peppers they was nearly two feet high but where it got to the ground where I'd been farming it was only a foot and a half high if that and I said, there's something wrong here. So uh, that's when things led to me getting a hold of John. And John got some uh, soil samples. And we found out that our ground, my ground was so out of balance that it, it, we couldn't believe it. And since then, uh, some of the, uh, well, before I was putting on uh, manure, uh, decayed manure. and. Uh, uh, liquid fertilizer and I was actually doing the ground more harm than good because what I was putting in I already had too much of and what I needed I wasn't putting in so when John uh, got all of everything tested and everything why well, we started putting the nutrients in it so that we got our ground balanced and uh, the first year I could notice a difference and this past year I couldn't believe the difference in the quality, the amount of production, and it's just, and I think next year is going to be better yet because I know we're going to add some more stuff to it next year. Here we see a pretty good harvesting yield here on some uh, determinate tomatoes. He's got a lot here, he's got a lot of happy customers, and uh, they're coming from a long ways around to get his tomatoes. Here's some, of some more of Bob's uh, tomatoes here. Got quite a good area. He's got about four acres total. And he's got a good number of crops. And uh, we'll be looking at a bunch of them. This is amber cup squash. Here we have the butternut squash. Looks like a very nice yield. We got a very healthy plants looks like and a lot of uh, squash to be harvested. Here we have some really nice uh, white uh, eggplant. Here's a close-up of them. Uh, really beautiful looking vegetables and I'm sure they'll be happily eaten by somebody. <laughs> Look at these tomatoes here. This is uh, pretty amazing. All the uh, tomatoes on these bushes. Pretty heavily laden. There's a lot of bushels here. A lot of weight. I get the bottom ones picked, then top ones will be as big as the bottom ones. <laughs> I've, I've, I've never had tomatoes like this before. Say that again, Bob? I've never had tomatoes like this before. By the time uh, I get the bottom ones all picked, the ones, uh, the green ones, they'll be as big on the top of the cages as the ones uh, on the bottom of the cages now. Amazing. So this is definitely the, your largest uh, yield on tomatoes? It's the largest yield I've ever had. Wow. I remember last year on your first year with us you saw some improvements but you didn't say it was the largest but you seem to be saying that now. <laughs> it is. It's, it's just unbelievable. I just 
I, in my wildest dreams, I didn't think that I could grow this, this kind of crop on this ground. I I've, I've just can't believe the results that I've had this year. It's, it's really rewarding when these people come back and keep telling me how good the produce tastes. Because if it don't taste good, you aren't going to go back and buy it. It's, taste okay. is, is the secret, uh, the big secret, what people go for is mm -hmm. taste. But they don't realize at the same time they got to have the nutrients and everything in there, not only for the taste, but for the, for the good of uh, eating it.